Hello folks and welcome to the first video in a series on asset pricing. In this video I will present some of the basics behind the consumption based asset pricing model. So without a further ado let's get started. Let us start by thinking of an investor who thinks about how much to save and consume and what portfolio of assets to hold. The basic pricing equation is derived from the first order condition to that problem. In this model the price should be equal to the expected discounted payoff, where we discount the payoff with respect to the investor's marginal utility. That is, the marginal utility loss of consuming less today and investing should be equal to the marginal utility gain of consuming more tomorrow as a result of the investment. If the price does not satisfy this relation, the investor should buy more or less of the asset. Uh, from this we can derive a rather beautiful equation for intertemporal consumption where the interest rate relates to the future marginal utility and thus the expected consumption path. The logical intu intuition is such that high real interest rates incentivizes investment. In our next slide we will touch upon this further. An investor's first order conditions is given by the basic consumption based model in front of you. Our objective with this model is rather simple. Figure out the value of uncertain future cash flows. Easier said than done, right? Well, not really, but this model helps a long way with the intuition. The model shows us that the price at time t is equal to the expected intertemporal elasticity of substitution times the payoff. That is, as shown by the model, where we divide the utility of future consumption by the utility of current consumption, where the beta sign captures the investor's impatience, also called the subjective discount factor. And the future payoff of a stock is stock price plus dividend, shown as xt plus 1. This payoff is a random variable, that is a stochastic variable, since an investor does not know how much he or she will get from their investment. Now let's take a step back and look at how we can derive the model. To begin with, uh, we simply model an investor by a utility function with current and future values of consumption. As seen here by the equation, where the utility equals current utility of consumption plus future utility from consumption discounted for the investor's impatience. This then begs the question, how much should the investor buy or sell? We can define this problem as a maximization problem as shown by the second equation with, where Euler denotes the consumption level when the investor has bought none of the asset and epsilon as the amount of the asset he or she chooses to buy. That is, consumption today equals current consumption minus price times the quantity of the asset. Thus, the investor faces a trade-off between investing and consuming. Given the investor's budget constraint, a higher value of p times epsilon will lower current consumption. The next equation gives us future consumption equals the future consumption level plus the payoff times the quantity of the asset. As we stated earlier, the payoff is future price plus dividends. By setting the derivative with respect to quantity equal to zero, we obtain the optimal consumption choice. And by dividing the right-hand side of the equation with the utility of current consumption from the left-hand side of the equation, we once again derive the basic pricing equation. The central takeaway of this model is that optimal intertemporal consumption decisions is a function of the investor's time preference and expected discounted utility from future payoffs where the investor continues to buy or sell the asset until the marginal loss equals the marginal gain. Hopefully this video has been helpful and in our next video we'll take a look at some basics behind stochastic discount factors. Good luck!